After plotting the bending moment diagram, the next thing we are going to calculate is the reactions calculations. And we are going to begin with the span A, B, and we are going to take moments about B. Therefore, on the span A, B, taking moments about B, we are going to have reaction at A multiplied by the distance from A to B, which is 6 meters. That is a clockwise moment, plus the bending moment at B, which is 2.40 a kilo newton meter so you have bending moment at b this is going to be equal to at d we have a point load of three kilo newtons and then we multiply it by the distance from where it is to the support b which is four meters therefore three times four and this is going to give us r a times six being equal to 3 times 4, that is 12, we subtract 2.4, and that is going to be Ra being equal to 12 minus 2.4, that is 9.6, then we divide by this 6, and that is going to give us a reaction of 1.6 kilo newton. So, that is the reaction at A. Then we go to the span BC. So we go to span BC. And we take moments about B. So taking moments about B, we are going to have anticlockwise moment of RC times the distance from C to B, which is 4 meters. So that is going to be RC times 4 plus Another anticlockwise moment that is the moment at B of 2.4 kilonewton meter. So we have 2.4 is equals to between C and B we have a UDL of 1 kilonewtons per meter. Convert it to point rod, multiply by the span over which it is distributed. It is going to act at the center. So we divide that span by 2. This will give us RC times 4 being equal to. This is going to be 8. So we are going to have uh, 8 minus, take 2.4, the other side of the equal sign. And this is going to give us a reaction of 8 minus 2.4, that is 5.6. And then we divide that by 4. And that is going to give us a reaction at C of 1.4 kilo. Newton. So when you divide 5.6 divided by 4, you get 1.4. Then to get the reaction at B, we are going to say that the sum of all the upward acting forces are equal to the sum of all the downward acting forces. Upward acting forces, we have reaction at A plus reaction at B plus reaction at C. Downward, downward acting forces. We have a point rod at D, which is 3 kN. Between the span B to C, we have a UDL of 1 kN per meter, multiplied by the U, uh, by 4 to convert it to point rod. That is the span over which it is distributed. RA is 1.6 kN. RB, that is what we want. RC is 1.4. Is equals 3 plus 4, that is 7. And therefore, Rb will be given by 7 minus 1.6 plus 1.4. That happens to be 3. So we are going to have 7 minus 3. And that is going to give us a reaction at B, a reaction of 4 kilo newton. So we have the three reactions that we Need. Then we are going to write them on our loaded beam. So we got uh, the reaction at A, 1.6 kilo newtons. Reaction at B, 4 kilo newtons. And reaction at C, that is uh, 1.4 kilo newtons. So this reactions values will help us to determine the shear forces. So the next thing we are going to do is to calculate the shear forces. And I'm going to do it 
on this part. So let me clean this part so that we can grip the shear forces. We are going to begin with the shear force at the end C. So the shear force at C is going to be equivalent to the reaction at C, which is 1.4 kilo newtons. Then we go to shear force between C and B, between C and B, which is going to change uniformly from 1.4 to 1.4 minus. Between C and B, we have a UDL of 1 kilo newtons per meter, convert it to point rod, multiply it by 4. So that is going to be 1 times 4. So 1.4 minus 4, that is negative 2.6 kilo newtons. Then we go to shear force at the support B. So the shear force at B will be this shear force between C and B of negative 2.6 kilo newtons plus the reaction at B, which is 4 kilo newtons. So we add that to 4. And that is going to give us a 1.4 kilo newtons. Then we go to shear force between B and D. So the shear force between B and D will be equivalent to the shear force at B, which is 1.4 kilo, 1.4 kilo newtons. Then we go to the shear force between D and A. So the shear force between D and A will be this 1.4 kilo newtons. Minus the point rod at D, which is 3 kN. And that is going to give us 1.4 minus 3, that is negative 1.6 kN. And finally, the shear force at A will be equivalent to the shear force between D and A, which is negative 1.6 kN. So, we now have all the shear forces that we need so that we can be able to plot the shear force diagram. So we go to SFD. So starting with the shear force at C, that is 1.4 kilonewtons. Let it be at this point. So we have 1.4 kilonewtons. The shear force between uh, C and B will change uniformly from 1.4 to negative 2.6. So negative 2.6 below this horizontal line. Remember, the positive shear forces are drawn above this horizontal line uh, and the negative ones below this horizontal line. So we are going to join 1.4 to 2.6 at that point. Then we join the same to our horizontal line. The shear force at B is uh, 1.4 kilonewtons, same to the shear force at C. So 1.4 at that point. So we are going to drop that to the horizontal line. The shear force between B and D is also equivalent to 1.4. So we are going to join this 1.4 all the way to D. So that is a straight line. So we got this as 1.4 kilo newtons. Then we join it to the horizontal line. Shear force between D and A, and A negative 1.6, so it's going to appear below this horizontal line. So negative 1.6, let's say, is at that point. So shear, uh, shear force at A, the same, 1.6 kN. So we got this as 1.6 kN. Negative shear force, negative shear force. Positive shear force, positive shear force. Then to complete our SFD, we are going to shade its outline for it to be very clear and very visible. As well as smart and beautiful, yeah? Okay. So ladies and gentlemen, that is how we plot a shear force diagram for such a continuous beam. So, subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell so that a video like this we have recorded when we upload it you will be notified so thank you very much ladies and gentlemen for watching our video please give us comments and tell us what you think about what we are doing if you like what you are doing what we are doing
please give us positive comments, give us thumbs up, and we are going to encourage to encourage us to continue doing this and much more. So let's meet in yet another lesson.